Okay, this is W1REX, and I'm going to give you a little intro on the X-Checker um, Crystal Oscillator slash Frequency Counter Board that we built at the Four Days in May 2017 Billathon. I call it the X-Checker Board. And this is what we have. Uh, we've got a, a plate over here for attaching or uh, contacting crystals. The oscillator circuit is in underneath the LCD, comes out, goes into this side of the circuit, which is the signal conditioner and a frequency counter. So I'll turn the board on. Now, you can't see much because the screen, it's hard to do an LCD screen and get it on this camera. So I'm going to turn it off for a second. And I'm going to take this board off. I built myself a little extender card for videotaping. And then I'll put the board back on the extended card. So now it's facing the camera better. So I gotta tilt the camera up a little bit more and that should oh, let's uh let's go out a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So hopefully uh, I can spot that you can see and read the the um, display pretty well. So in the case of I'm I made this in particular for uh, use in grinding FT243 crystals. So here's a typical FT243 crystal that you find in the in the uh, flea markets and whatnot. It's a um, Peterson radio. It's marked 10700. So if I put this on those two contacting plates, if you can read over my hand, it says 10698950. So that's reading roughly 1,040 low, 1,050 hertz lower than the marked frequency on the crystal. Now the thing about the marked frequency, that is only a crystal will only operate at its marked frequency if it meets the exact same loading characteristics that you specified when you had it manufactured. In the case of QRP ME crystals, I believe the loading is 20 picofarads. Um, capacitive load on the crystal and then it will oscillate at the mark frequency. If you put it in a circuit that does not have that same capacitive load, the crystal is going to oscillate either higher or lower than a mark frequency, which is why you always get crystals that they don't seem to ever come where they are. Now, it just so happens I got this, here's another glass, I think, uh, I don't know who made that, McCoy? Um, I don't know who the manufacturer is, but it's marked 4.0000. That's a lot of O's there. And I'm going to put this on that plate. And that oscillates at 3,999450. So that's roughly, um, well, 550 hertz lower than 4 meg. And this thing reads 4 meg. That's a, a 4.000000. Um, that's a precision crystal, and it reads this reads roughly 550 hertz lower than that. Now, one of the things I did uh, when designing this, you've got a little uh, capacitor trimmer right there, which is going to change the clock crystal going into the micro, and the micro is used as a counter and a computerized gate to control how much time is allowed to do the counting. In the case of the program I've written, uh, the gate is a tenth of a second and it multiplies or in essence adds a zero which is why it always reads the bottom is always a zero because it only is a seven digit counter, uh, seven div digits of accuracy but an eight digit display. So the bottom digit is always a zero. Unless you are um, doing very low frequencies. In this case though, I changed the program in this one so it always reads at the seven digit accuracy because I really didn't think we wanted to worry about reading crystals that are oscillating at 10, me uh, 10 kilohertz or such. So I, I fixed the gate time at tenth of a second and that allows it to update lots faster. I have another one over here. There's another glass crystal. This is marked 5.0000, another very accurate crystal uh, in the reference in the marking. And there it reads 5000499999. This is reading, in essence, one count off 
from the marked frequency. So this crystal has got or was designed at the same loading as whatever that circuit has got in it. So in the case of calibrating your frequency counter, because that is a 4 megahertz crystal that's not very accurate driving the clock, I've included in your kit a crystal inner bag with a frequency marking on it. What I did was I calibrated this micro to read the same as or as close as I could to my $3,500 HP counter. That baby is very accurate and um, it was a lot of money. I didn't pay that much but but I paid in blood, sweat, and tears when I got it. So, the crystal I have in this bag says 5 comma 999 comma 834. I'm going to put this in here. 5 comma 999 comma 810. So this is reading damn close to what it would read on my HP. I'm only 30 hertz off. And remember that last digit the the ones is really not valid so I'm reading two counts in the micro on the board I'm reading two counts off from what this thing read on my three thousand dollar HP so I would say this thing is calibrated pretty well so in your case you would take your bag with your crystal put it on the plate and then trim the trimmer until it displays as close as you can get to the marked uh, frequency and then of course you want to save that little calibration crystal as your golden standard put it away leave it in the bag with this marking on it so later on you can recalibrate your counter uh, one of the things you notice I've got this thing sitting in this black this gray track this is um, Curtis Industries TR3 relay track I designed the board to fit right in there. I, I've done a lot of boards back in the 80s and 90s for science uh, projects and whatnot for education. And I use this track. I happen to f have some laying around, so I thought I'd design the new board to fit in it. And then I discovered I couldn't find any in the distribution channels. I have some coming in this week. So I will have a couple more boards I'm going to design that fit into the same track. Um, so at any rate, uh, if you calibrate your... Uh, 4 megahertz clock crystal that's running the micro to what uh, you have on your golden standard crystal you should have a fairly decent little frequency counter you'll also notice that I over here I've actually installed a little uh, switch instead of having the jumper pin which is why if you, if you look on the thing it says switch uh, and on so if you push the switch on remember, remember that you've got a single pole uh, double throw so when you pull the lever this way it contacts the last the other two the common in the center and the other end so those are the two that you have to push on or, or jumper on with your little jumper thing uh, and the last thing let's see we've got everything in here pretty much oh uh, this at point A down here marked on the board you should be reading a between two and a half and three volts uh, uh, DC as the bias to do the proper counting. That sets the DC level going into your Schmidt trigger and the AC RF frequency or RF frequency coming in from the uh, oscillator is going to ride on top of that and, and um, do the switching on the Schmidt trigger. So that's really all there is to it except for one other thing. <laughs> when you take an FT, here's what I do on an FT243 crystal. All right, here is a 7025 crystal. Now I might want to move that. That's on the boundary. Oh, gee, I'm, I don't have an extra license class, so if I put that in a circuit, it might be operating at 7023. That would violate my license if I'm not an extra. So I might want to take that apart and grind it and bring it up to like 7035. Move it, move it up 10. So if you take this and put it over on the two points you'll really see that indeed in this particular circuit whoops let me move my hand it's reading 7023 comma 970 that's what it's oscillating at in that oscillator circuit that's a little too close to the boundary so move it up in this case if you take it apart you read it first find out what it reads write that down 
then take it apart and very carefully take it apart and you gotta remember okay oh, let me look at show you again it's got three uh, three screws uh, you want to make sure when you do take that apart that you that you put lots of downward pressure because if you look at the back of this crystal uh, it's got some red goop in this case those it's like Loctite this was made back in the 40s or 50s who knows exactly when I don't see a date on it um, and that's that's uh, Loctite to keep the thing from loosening up very big deal uh, but it also locks that sucker up so you gotta put really good downward pressure while you're torquing so you, you definitely want a good torquing small Phillips uh, typically with a wide handle on it so you can get that torque and you want good downward pressure to keep it from stripping those little um, screw holes but anyway once you take it apart very carefully when you do that keep pressure on that front plate because there's a spring inside uh, jeepers I don't have one here let's see if I can very quickly um, Oh, I should, I should take one apart for you, I guess. Um, let's see if this is going to come apart real. Oh, I don't know if I want to take that one apart. That's that's a pretty good crystal. I'll take the 6450, whoops, 6450 apart. Uh, I'm going to do it off camera because I'm going to do it real fast. Hopefully, if I can get, this one's got flathead screws in it. Um, or, I'm sorry, not flathead, but. Yeah, they're actually flathead too. They're flat standard screwdriver slots, so I'm going to very quickly take them apart with this jeweler screwdriver. Hopefully, sometimes I've, I've actually applied enough torque to snap the screws right off, so sometimes your, your crystal will not, or your holder will not come apart very well. Um, sometimes they come apart pretty good. Um, that's why it's best if you can get if you find a bunch of them at a flea market and they're going for nothing grab them uh, I know some guys were buying them um, for just before the billathon for 25 cents each so we're gonna t okay now I'm gonna move this out of the way for a minute by the way, if, uh, you can't really see, but if you follow these wires back in here, I've got this powered up by a small bench um, power supply instead of the 9-volt battery. I'm going to move that out of the way for just a second because i got to show you one other trick. This um, is pretty hard to see, but there is an actual rubber gasket between the faceplate and the body. And a lot of times, that thing over the, over the years is starting to act like glue holding that face plate together so I typically will very carefully because you, you, if you slip you can put your screw right through your fingertips so if you get it out of the way you can use your screwdriver as a little um, wedge now this is why I say you gotta be careful I'm always applying pressure on this thing to keep it from springing off because there's a big giant spring inside here and you gotta get to the gasket take it apart well, this one is uh, very very different again another different crystal holder this has got a rectangular holder so there's the spring it's like a copper con both a contact and a spring mechanism there's a plate which which dis distrib distributes the spring tension over the crystal and there is You gotta be very very careful there is your quartz crystal and you only want to hold this by the edges you don't want to hold it flat so here it is and I can put that right on the board and guess what I forgot to write down the frequency <laughs> now how do you get the other contact on this well this is why I have this little plumbing cap with a lead weight in it and a little socket pin so I can plug it into this Oops, I'm, I'm out of focus so let's bring it back in here I can plug it into this little socket pin right here and then I can put this baby right on top of that crystal and if you look at that screen we're oscillating at 
six comma four four nine comma eight two zero. I can't remember exactly where that was before we measured it, but what I normally would do is I would take and add weights into the plumbing cap to make it read the same it was before I took it out of the holder. And then I've compensated for the pressure on that crystal inside the holder. I don't know if that's a big deal or not. It, it works for me. So uh, I try to make the reading outside um, the holder on my apparatus be the same as inside and that way when I grind it and I measure it and grind it and measure it I know that when I put it all back into the thing it's going to be read as close to the frequency I want as possible so that's how I do it and uh, now that's an intro to this I'm not going to go into grinding the crystal right now I just want you to see all the the various pieces of this um, um, kit now here is the pot which changes the reading at A, which, which in essence changes the bias level of the signal going into the Schmidt trigger. If you unplug this guy, the oscillator now comes in and dead ends, and now the RCA is the only signal going um, into the signal conditioning, so you can actually bring a signal in here and read it from, let's say, your transmitter. It has to be a little bit higher level um, so you have to sort of watch out where you take your signal from. But when I put it back, now the oscillator goes into the circuit right through the RCA pin. So you want to make sure you don't have two signals, <laughs> trying to measure two signals at the same time. And the other last thing about uh, this particular kit is I accidentally, over here on this capacitor in the status uh, box, it's marked 1,000, but it really should be a 49 pico 47 picofarad, not the 1,000. I borrowed one of these 1,000s on the footprint when I did the schematic, and I for, well the layout, and I forgot to change it to 49. So you'll find two 1,000 picofarad um, caps. One of them is right there, and one of them is right there. So when you use up the two in the oscillator section, if you build that first, you're going to say, oh, there's a thousand here, and you're not going to find it in the kit because it's a 47. Um, and that's about it. You can bring in over on this connector, you can bring in, if you've got a good 5 volt supply, you can bring in your 5 volts and ground over here and bypass uh, the switch and the 9 volt battery and the regulator circuit, if you want to do that. Sorry about that. If you've got a very accurate external signal source that, that you can crank into 4 megahertz, you can bring that in here and that goes down and bypasses this crystal. Uh, or you can take the crystal out and then bring in an external source. Back when I was uh, doing a lot of quartz crystal microbalance stuff, I used this same circuit. I didn't put an, uh, a crystal here. I brought the signal in from very accurate um, uh, oven-controlled um, crystal oscillators and would bring the signal in to run the micro so it stayed at the same frequency all the time. So anyway, that's, um, that's the board, uh, the kit. And, and the various pieces of it. And the next video will be uh, a video on uh, how to grind crystals. So, hope this helps you uh, um, come up with uh, your proper build and get ready to grind some crystals. We'll see you later. Bye.